into this mix. How's it going everyone? This is Derek Bros with Activist Post and the Conscious Resistance Network. Today we're going to be talking about the latest developments in the protracted war in Syria and new developments in the conflict against North Korea and how all of this affects you and whether or not we're going to World War III. First off, I want to say this. I am not an expert in geopolitical analysis. I do my best as an individual, as a critical thinker, as a free thinker, and as a journalist to study multiple sources, to read everything I can on a topic, and to analyze multiple angles to see who benefits from any given situation, especially as it relates to geopolitics, to resources, to the economies of nations across the world, and to power plays that exist. We have to understand that despite the fight for a quote-unquote new world order, there are probably factions that exist in the fight for this new world order. We have the Western nations, uh, NATO, US, uh, Britain, Saudi Arabia, all the Western allied nations, Australia, etc. Essentially, the current stage of the British Empire and the British Crown and their colonies that are spread far and wide and their allied nations. We have that world order and there may be even further divisions within that. And then you have another faction that could be this Russian, Chinese, um, Syrian, Iranian, Eastern Bloc that opposes the United States and opposes Western hegemony and calls them out and uses their media to expose the lies of the Western Front. But at the same time, I don't think that there are people who advocate freedom or who, or who have the interest of the people on the ground level, you and I, at heart. These people are still tyrants, they're still statists, they are still working to promote their message, their ideas, and at, at the end of the day, I don't think it's going to be anything that benefits the people. So I want to get that out of the way. The, the ideas that I'm putting out there, they are not specifically only anti-Western, but they are also anti-Eastern in the sense that I'm not trying to say Putin or, or Assad are heroes. So let's get that out of the way and let's try to look at this objectively. First off, we'll start with an article that I wrote for Activist Post called Former Department of Defense Science Advisor Debunks Claim of Syrian Chemical Attacks. Now let's start with the beginning. For those who are unaware, who haven't been paying attention in the last four years, there has been an ongoing civil war, as it is called by some, within Syria, where you have rebel groups who are fighting against Syrian President Bashar al-Assad. Now these rebel groups, which consist of groups like al-Nusra Front, which is tied to al-Qaeda, um, and other radical groups, that some that have been tied to ISIS, and groups the U.S. says are terrorists, the U.S. is now funding these guys to try to get them to fight against Syrian President Bashar al-Assad. The U.S. says this is a legitimate uprising, it's random, uh, it's, it's not being stoked by them. But knowing the history, the Western history, the United States history, the CIA history of funding coups in other nations and of sponsoring state terrorism, we have to be skeptical of the claims. So again, once you start to look into the claims over the last few years, many people have pulled out evidence, including Department of Defense documents that show that the United States and other Western nations knew their interference in Iraq and Syria would lead to the rise of more extreme groups and then that they could use those extreme groups to go and take out their enemies. So that's what we're seeing now is a proxy war taking place within Syria, essentially an extension of the Cold War where the United States and Russia are opposing each other through Syria with the West saying, we're trying to help the rebels to stop the dictator, that horrible dictator Assad, and the Russians and other allies of Syria saying, the West is just trying to overthrow Assad, so we're going to try to actually fight ISIS, and you have Russia dropping bombs and trying to kill ISIS and get them out of the country, and accusing the West of really faking it and not actually trying to defeat them. So that's been going on for several years now. Recently, with the election of President Donald Trump, many people thought that America was going to be moving away from this global police force because Trump talked about making America great and putting America first, and he was not espousing, in the beginning at the least, an interventionist policy. But on April 4th, there was reports of a chemical gas attack, a sarin gas attack in the town of Khan Shakyon, and this was on April 4th, a chemical gas attack apparently killed 74 people and injured 557 people, among these babies. You saw the reports in the news, you saw Donald Trump saying, we saw those pictures of beautiful babies dying and he crossed the red line, I have to do something now. And then within days, without an investigation, without 
any actual proof, the United States government, their allied governments, and the compliant media were very quick to point the finger at President Bashar al-Assad and saying, this is the Syrian government, this is the Syrian regime, this is why we need to go in and overthrow him. Yet, the other side, again, the Russians, Syria themselves, and other non-allied nations called out the West and said there's, there's not very much evidence for this. And really, when you look at it, the area where the chemical attack happened was under the control of al-Nusra Front, the al-Qaeda-linked group I just mentioned, which has been funded by the United States and is in possession of sarin gas. Despite all this, the West continues to say this was Assad and this was followed, these claims were followed by bombs being dropped in Syria. And on that note, we should see that the bombs that were dropped in Syria by Mr. Trump, the bombs that all of the corporate media said, oh, beautiful images of bombs being dropped. I mean, that's just, it's sickening that the dead stream media has gotten to the point that they're tricking the compliant and deceived public into worshiping warfare, into worshiping bombs being dropped. Not only the money being wasted, but the lives being lost. And just the bullshit mentality behind it, the fact that, Warfare is seen as something to be proud of. This is nationalism again. This is not patriotism. This is jingoism. This is the same kind of mentality that allowed horrible tyrants to do whatever they wanted in the past because they had the permission from the people. So after the chemical attack, Trump orders an airstrike on the Syrian air base that they said launched the missiles that led to the chemical attack in this town. However, this is now being disputed by Theodore Postel, who's a professor emeritus at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, MIT, and he's also a former scientist with the U.S. Department of Defense. And in a new 14-page report, he debunks the White House's report that concluded that Assad was behind the attacks. His report found that the U.S. and supporting governments have not provided any concrete evidence to back up their claims. He also said that it is increasingly likely that the attacks were carried out by rebel forces. The implications of Postal's analysis is that it was carried out by anti-government insurgents as the town is in militant controlled territory of Syria. As I said, it's controlled by al-Nusra Front, which is tied to the US funding, tied to al-Qaeda and other groups. Postal also writes that the document does not provide any evidence whatsoever that the US government has concrete knowledge that the government of Syria was the source of the chemical attack. Postal's claims are based on several arguments. For one, he says that the repeated use of chemical attacks by rebel forces over the last few years, including in 2013, makes it clear that they are likely the culprits behind this new attack. Also, he examines the main piece of evidence put forth by the White House, namely photographs which purport to show a crater with an artillery shell that the U.S. says contained the sarin gas. And there's a crater where a bomb most likely dropped, and there's a canister in there. And they said that is the sarin gas canister. However, Postal is saying the conclusion is based on an assumption made by the White House when it cited the source of the sarin release and the photographs of that source. My own assessment is that the source was very likely tampered with or staged, so no serious conclusion could be made from the photographs cited by the White House. He also notes that the damage to the shell is not consistent with being dropped from an airplane. He believes the damage indicates that an explosive charge was placed on the shell containing the sarin gas and then detonated. So this goes on and on just to show you that this is more than likely a lie. I've got another two articles here that I want you to read on your own. One is called The Top 10 Reasons to Doubt the Official Story on a Assad Poison Gas Attack. And it gives you some good things to think about there. The other one that I want you to look at is called Five Major Stories That Blow the Official Narrative on Syria Out the Water. And some of the most telling are that award-winning journalist Seymour Hersh has reported that Hillary Clinton approved sending sarin gas to rebels used to frame Assad and to start the Syrian war. So you can look into that. That was coming from a new essay from him, a new report from him. We also can go back and remember that Putin previously revealed that ISIS, our supposed enemy in Syria, is funded by 40 members of the G20, these 20 biggest nations, most strong, wealthy nations in the world that are allies to the United States. Putin said that there is evidence that they are funding ISIS. There's also this declassified CIA document from 1983 that show that there has been a long-term plan to destroy Syria for an oil pipeline that could benefit the US's ally, Turkey. 
And then you also have more recently General Wesley Clark after 9-11 giving an interview to Amy Goodman saying that the U.S. has a plan to go into seven different countries. They're going to go into Iraq, Afghanistan, uh, Somalia, Libya, Syria, and then eventually Iran. I think he also said Lebanon as well. So essentially the West is planning to take over that whole area and carve it up for their allies. Israel, Saudi Arabia, among others, and to use it for whatever purposes they choose. And you're being fed a lie that this is all about saving beautiful children or this is just the latest stage of helping some rebels. And in the Syria front, we also had another recent attack that was being blamed on Assad now. There was a bus bombing that just happened days ago, I think this weekend now, and it has all the signs of a suicide bombing that are the call sign for these rebels on the ground. But it's once again being blamed on the Syrian army. And there's an article here by Brandon Turbeville called Syria Bus Bombing Conducted by Terrorists, Not Syrian Government. And I advise you to read that as well. All the links will be below this video so you can read that. Before we switch gears here to talk about North Korea, I want to just read from you this, uh, this new piece that came from the anti-media called The Real Reason Trump to Bomb Syria. And I think this paints a picture of what's really going on behind the scenes. It says, as Trump learned, once he moved into the White House, government cannot be stable without the support of the fourth estate, that is, the media. And without threats from abroad, there isn't a war to sustain the state. So that's why the press is now so important and has been important in blowing up and magnifying a threat so that the state's rationale for military action sticks. And this is a key point. As many in the libertarian movement call this escalation in Syria the new Iraq, one can only hope for a moment of clarity to shake the president's core and bring him back to his previous stance. But if history is any indicator, hope shouldn't guide us in this moment of darkness, as even some of the president's most trusted advisors are left on the sidelines wondering what could happen if Trump had just been cool under pressure. Alas, Trump isn't the leader of a free nation because a nation of free men have no leader. If anything, he is shaping up to be just another politician, chronically unaware that there are drastic unseen consequences for his military actions. So Trump is falling into the same, the same line as all the other people before him, pushing for more war, more war. This little piece that I'm going to show you comes from nobody knows what's happening in Syria, but everyone is bombing it anyway, also from the anti-media. It's a report that I suggest you check out. It says there's no happy end to this story, not least one that involves multiple state actors heightening their involvement. It's time to admit that the U.S. ultimately tried and failed to remove a dictator who directly threatened its economic interests from power, one who may or may not be responsible for some of the most egregious human rights violations in recent history. In that context, the Syrian people have suffered enough. In a geopolitical chess game they never asked for, a viable solution must involve less violence, not more of it. Once a peace process can be achieved, the people of Syria can decide their own fate of Assad. They can decide what they want to do with their leader and what they want to do with their country. So that was what's going on in Syria. And then all of a sudden it seemed like Trump switched gears and there was a ramping up and there continues this week to be a ramping up of talk of North Korea. Just last week I posted this on Facebook. These are reports on North Korea from the last couple hours. Foreign journalists in North Korea told to prepare for big event. China tells military to be ready to move to North Korea border. Why Trump may be about to decapitate North Korea. Trump says he's prepared to take on North Korea without China if needed. Kim Jong-un orders immediate evacuation as tensions with U.S. escalate. Trump on North Korean threats. We are sending an armada. And all of these are in response to reports that the U.S. was sending uh, naval troops and ships to set up along the border of North Korea and to get as close as they can on the South Korean side. At the same time, China is sending troops. And just a couple days ago, you had Vice President Pence saying that the era of patience with North Korea is over. Uh, then you also have an ex-Pentagon chief saying North Korea is not suicidal. They won't attack the U.S. first. Syria and Russia oppose Western empire. They're not going to support it. They're not going to allow it. And they've made that clear. Trump's dropping of bombs on Syria may actually have been a sign to China, we're willing to use bombs, to North Korea, hey, we could be coming for you, or to Russia, hey, we're going to drop bombs. Even if Trump didn't actually hit the target he supposedly intended to, or maybe he didn't even intend to hit a target, it was just a message. 
it is now clear that the U.S. is willing to drop bombs once again on nations they have not declared war with. And this should be, this really shouldn't be news to anybody who's paid attention because right now the U.S. is taking tax dollars from people like you and they're funneling it to Saudi Arabia to fight their war in Yemen. The U.S. is dropping drone bombs in Yemen, Somalia, Pakistan. Last week we dropped the mother of all bombs, the biggest non-nuclear weapon that we have, the military, the U.S. military has, on Afghanistan. The increasing of reports about the danger of North Korea. I have trouble deciding whether or not these are legitimate and people should be concerned if we should be buying our bunkers and buying our iodine so we don't die from nuclear war. Or if this is just a part of this fear paradigm. You know, I hesitate to even report and talk about these things because I think it's important for us to know what's going on geopolitically. We have to understand that there are false flags being pushed, there are lies being pushed by the Western media and the Eastern media. Most of these people do not have the common man and woman and human beings interest at heart. They are only thinking about themselves and we have to recognize that. But we gotta cut through the bullshit and we actually have to try to find the truth. North Korea, the people there are heavily propagandized. They're heavily indoctrinated. People who have escaped, some of them have come to find a more free life living elsewhere. Some of them have come to be puppets for the Western media in order to spread anti-North Korean propaganda. Either way, we can see that the man who runs that country does not seem to have his people's interest at heart. But he also opposes the Western powers. So we maybe will agree with him on one issue, the West is a problem, but the idea of supporting Putin or uh, North Korea or Syria, it should disturb you just as much as the idea of supporting the United States dictators and supporting uh, Britain's dictators and all the other tyrants of the West. I don't want to support any tyrants. I don't want to support any of these people and any, any of their status machinations. I want to support the people. And at the bottom of it, we have Syrians, we have Russians, we have North Koreans, we have Iranians, we have Americans who are all fighting to just live free and to live the way they want to. And they have people that have dominated and taken control of their country, both within the government and within various NGOs and nonprofits and think tanks and the media and the military that all form this complex that are really fighting to control and dominate. So at the end of the day, maybe you should be aware that there's a possible nuclear war on the horizon that people like Trump and his advisors, the neocons and the neoliberals who are thirsty for war are willing to push us that far. Or, or it's likely that they are all using the media to build hype around this. And the same way we saw this Cold War constant going up, we understand that war, fear, it creates a certain frequency within us. It takes us off balance. We are not living in line with peace and with love and light and truth. We are thrown off and we give in to the fear, we give in to all of the worry. And not only that, people like Raytheon and others, their stocks, they skyrocket. They're making money and profiting off war, off death, off violence. And the media is definitely making money off your fear. So I want you to be aware of these things. I want you to pay attention. I want you to be aware that the West feeds you lies. Don't buy their bullshit so easily. But at the same time, don't allow them to be sucking you into the fear paradigm. All of the links I covered will be in the information below. Please do the research. Find out for yourself what you think. It's up to you to form your own opinion and to look into reality and see if you can find the truth because that's what we're ultimately after. We're ultimately after truth, justice, and building a better world. Thank you guys for listening. Once again, my name is Derek Bros. If you like this message, please follow me on patreon.com slash Derek Bros. Support independent media so I can continue to do this. Thank you guys. Remember, you are powerful, you are beautiful, and you are free. Peace.